Yo, welcome back to another podcast. And today we have Tsong Han over here. He's a Singapore basketball player and he's one of the best basketball players in Singapore. Tsong Han, can you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is uh, Wong Tsong Han. I'm playing for Adroid and I'm 23. And yeah, thanks K for inviting me here. Hey, thanks for coming, man. Thanks for doing it. And can you tell us about uh, your basketball journey? Like, how do you start? Basketball. Uh, I started as a table tennis player instead, but then uh, it's kind of like dual sports. It so I was like in table tennis and basketball at the same time, and then I was more uh, towards basketball because it's more friends of mine playing and everything. So I ex- decided to quit uh, table tennis and go for basketball instead. Do you ever think that you would like go pro in basketball? Uh, not really despite of my height because I was really really short in primary school I was like 140 so at the end of the day I was just like playing out of like fun I didn't know that I could be able to make it to a pro nice how is it like playing with the KL Dragons are you still with them? oh no I'm not with them anymore I was playing with them for the uh, last time last year for 8 months yeah it was stress because it's like a first professional job and everything is so um in details and you have to be so disciplined in everything because it's real pro and and you have to pay they can they, you have to pay fines for being late being mistraining so yeah it's so much different from whatever, whatever you've been doing the past how many years cool at what point did you know that you're going to go pro I'm not sure though but then um just out, it just came out of a sudden, just came out of a blue moon when I was playing a semi-pro in this league called Hoax Challenge in Malaysia. And then they called me up uh, first time and then say like, hey, am I interested to play? So I was like, why not? Like, it just came out of a sudden, I didn't plan everything. Have you ever thought of quitting basketball? Uh, yeah, I did. Like, during the journey because kind of get t- so tired of it and I stopped for a while and joined MMA for like uh, 7 to 8 months and then after that I found out that I still mo- love basketball more than anything so I nice. came back yeah I remember you said like you wanted to quit but then like you didn't yeah, like, yeah, yeah. good thing you didn't uh, like it's really <laughs> wasted talent uh, if you did yeah, yeah, yeah. but like, I mean it's a choices to make in life la. like I give up I give out studies, I give out a lot of time to just to play ball, just to train, just to work my ass off so that I could make it to somewhere in one day, you know? Yeah. Um, personally, like, I think that you're, like, the best player, like, in terms of skills for basketball, as in, in Singapore only. Yeah. But, like, and I'm sure a lot of people think that way as well, but what do you have to say to that? I mean, you can be... The best out of yourself if you work the right way to work hard and also you know if so, you have to choose to give up some stuff like you choose basketball as your career because it's not a one day one week or one month thing it's, it's gonna be years and so much sweat in and out so much hard work and for sure you gotta give up a lot of things instead of saying you want to do still go study and play play sports at the same time yeah can, can you tell us like uh, what do you give up for basketball I give up my youth <laughs> <laughs> no, I give up I give up uh, I give up studies I, I, I was in the IT for like a couple months or maybe and then I plan I was thinking like this is not the one the road that I want like so I make a decision to have a talk with my family and then uh, just quit school and then just pursue whatever I, I want to pursue it. Um, I also wanted to quit poly but then I didn't have the balls to quit poly so like can you share like how do you have like the guts to quit uh, school? So at that point I was thinking school or basketball so yeah, 9 to 5 jobs or basketball uh. so to me I don't end up having a career that I have to struggle. Instead, I want a career that I love. Yeah. Like, I want, making a, your hobby to become a job is, is a bad... It's, it's not a bad thing, but then it's not a very good thing either. Like, 
you were you were you were kind of tired out of your job and you were think that I want happiness out of my hobby, right? But yeah. then sometimes you think back, it's because of your happiness and your hobby, it became your job. Yeah. So it's so much better than you going into a job like a nine to five job, a marketing job that maybe there's so many competitiveness and yeah. maybe it's not really what you like. Yeah. Yeah. So see how you manage or table out whatever you want. So when your playing career ends, um, what do you plan on doing? Not really much thinking about it, but like to have our own business would be good. You yeah. ever thought of coaching or? Nah, I don't have the patience. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I like kids a lot. I, I do uh, hang out, not say hang out, but like do coach a little bit with kids. Yeah. But just that maybe because I'm still young and and playing so hard, I still have so much patience on kids nowadays. Yeah. And it would tend to bring bad things towards the kids instead. So maybe not so soon. But yeah, we'll consider. What is like a good coach to you? I mean, good coach, there's a lot of kind of like, which is... Good coach can be those kind that like will know everything, will know what the team needs, will yeah. know what every individual player is. So will know the individual player so well that a situation they know what kind of player is in need to be in the game. Yeah. And some good coaches can be like they can be so good um doing training, doing skills wise, doing you know, stamina and everything. So at the end of the day, there won't be one whole full coach, uh, like, in games or in competition, just a good coach. But then, like, there's always, that's why there's always a few coaches in the team, which is some good coaches, some coaches can be like, oh, so good in practice, and maybe some good, some coaches can be so great at a game. So at the end of the day, you're saying good coaches, there's many, but then, like, you got to... As player, we have to compensate, and we have to learn, like how to co- how to adapt to every any or every kind of coaches, be good or bad. Okay, so like no no power coach, uh, like just I mean, like they'll be good at a bit. So yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. Okay, just now you say that because of like you being young, like you might not be good for like teaching kids. Mm-hmm. So like in what way is it bad for the kid? Like. Like maybe kids nowadays like to learn a lot of like advanced move, yeah. which is but then what we really want to help the kids and if we really want to help the kids as a coach, we will always teach fundamentals, fundamentals and fundamentals before we advance to somewhere higher, you know. Yeah. But a lot of things kids don't know and they want to learn like all those so advanced moves that they themselves can't handle and yeah. then when you try to teach them the right way, you know, you don't have patience, like they don't listen, they don't they don't um, get good with the, the thing that you thought and and then end up you will be like so frustrated either with yourself or maybe with the player. But you can't be frustrated with the kids cause it's your job to coach him right. Yeah. So this is the thing that I'm saying that like, I don't have the patience yet, but like I think it will come eventually. Uh. Okay. <clears throat> okay, let me think well. <laughs> Have you ever, um, as a player, dealt with like a impatient coach? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Like, there's many. But yeah. Like, there's always a lot of saying in the club. Like, the club, example, I would just put it like a club, there's always boss management and then coach player. Yeah. Right? So we are like the a, a short saying we are like the the trooper in the team so if the captain the com- commanding officer or the captain say something like we can't we can't don't listen right yeah yeah so at the end of the day if you want to make to the pro be he's a good coach bad coach I mean we have doubts in him we don't have doubts in him we don't trust we trust we have to listen like you listen, but you make your own decision at the end of the day. Yeah. Right. So at the end of the day, I do, I do have thoughts. I, I mean, I do have 
uh, points where playing semi pros in Thailand recently. I have a coach. So I'm not gonna say names. I have yeah. a coach, and then uh, we just didn't agree. I mean, I trusted him, but we just didn't agree the way he he uh, handled the game. Yeah. But uh, I did give faces. I did uh, give a lot of um, a lot of discouraged. Um, moment and uh, atmosphere to the team. Yep. But like I try to make the changes uh, over the night and try to like adapt to it, which is given given like even though no matter what he say, you know it's not gonna be right, and then just not go here and say yes, okay. But then you, as a point guard, as a player in the court, you gotta make the decision in the game. Yep. So. A lot of learning point for me too, cause I'm just young. I think I'm not very disciplined enough yet. But then, like, I think yeah, I'm learning it the harder way. You know, it just take, give me it's just just gonna take so much time. Yeah, because I know you from like last time. So like last time, um, you weren't the most like disciplined or like um best attitude. But then like now like. I've seen that like you have come a long way in like changing your attitude and everything. Mm-hmm. So can you share like uh, what was it that helped you to grow into like having a better attitude? Like was it like just age or how do you actually mature? I think surrounding. I think my surrounding was important. Like when I was um when I graduated from secondary school and yep. then I was like with this team called um Proform. Yeah. Yeah, and then it was surrounded with um Americans, British Americans, you know, so the culture they have is is loud, which is like it's very verbally loud and actions wise loud, and then but then like whatever they tell you during the practice when it's enclosed, no one see, it's so disciplined that like you eventually don't want to change, but you will still change at the end of the day because it's everyday thing that yeah. you every day you practice. But so disciplined with, with attendance, with uh, punctuality, with body language, with, uh, your language, you know everything. So, eventually, uh, I kind of, learned it the harder way, which is like you know when you did something that the coaches don't like, you got to get punishment, right? Yep. So at the end of the day, um, I was like, the, one of the best player. But I was the most, you know, the misbehaved kind, you know. Yeah. And then I learned how way up was been like it was like for a year plus and then and then a lot of people have been telling me like, Hey, you 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 know, you make a changes, you know, you did change your attitude, you did change your discipline, change your character wise. But there's people always say it can be better, it can be better, it can be better and then when I grow older I no longer we perform, but I'm still grateful for them. Yeah. yeah, and then I was with the bigger player, which is, you know, those people in Singapore singers, my club, my senior, and everything, and Wei Long and Larry, all this. So, they taught me a lot of things over the years, over over the path and everything. So, if they make it. And they give you a good advice. Yeah. Why not listen, right? So yeah. I took it in, but it's just so many things that need to be changed. So it's just so long. So I mean, I'm still not the best version of myself yet. But like, I think I make a big changes if for for you to know, since you know me for so long. Yeah. And then I think I make a big changes even. Like people that see me now are still shocked. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but like, yeah, I think I'm happy with whatever, however I am now, and I'm going to be better in terms of basketball, in terms of I'm, as a person, you know, yeah. so, just need time, yeah. Nice. Um, can you share, like, um, what's the difference between the culture of, like, um, Americans and British versus Singapore? Um, trainings, how they show, how they... How they want you as a player to show and to be confident, and at the same time you have to show within the limit to be the best player. 
Okay, uh, sorry, what do you mean by show? Okay, so, mm-hmm. example, nowadays, it, I will just put an example. Nowadays, like, uh, in the game. Yeah. So, in a local league in Singapore, like, normally, people don't like, or coaches don't like people to, like, always take one-on-one yeah. or be fancy fool with the skill. Yeah. But then, in Americans, like, you, we train those moves. We train to be fancy. We train to be play one-on-one we train to play in, in a lot of situation in yep. a lot of different kind of um, um, move different kind of situation move and everything so they always want you to go at them and show that you are the best player and show that you are you, are, you train all this and yep. it's okay to be fancy because we train all this but in terms that for local if you being fancy means you are trying to mess around yep. you play one-on-one you are trying yep. to be the solo guy, you know. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I mean, I'm okay with both culture, but then like, why not learn both culture and put it into one? Yeah. So, uh, I would say, I have a very different game from a lot of kind of player. Yeah. But then, I wouldn't say that I'm very best yet because I still think that I still got so much to learn. Yeah. And then, just that, it's just I'm just brought up so differently. I'm brought up by so many individual coaches, so many trainers, so many good team coaches, and then I just absorb everything in as I want. So I don't choose, and but then I just put it all in together as one. Nice. What's like the difference between like let's say you and all the other Singapore slingers player like versus like people who want to actually make it but then didn't. What's your question again? Uh, like, what's the difference between like like the top level Singapore players, like you and uh, Singapore Slingers players, versus um, like casual people that want to or like people that want to be in the Singapore Slingers, but then they are not good enough. Like, what's the difference between you guys and them? Opportunity over the years. Okay. Uh, because I feel that opportunity over the years is so important that like when you. Be you in a youth age, be you in your, in your you know, young adult age. Opportunity given wise is so important that and you have to be hardworking in terms to get opportunities. Uh. Yeah. So I think nowadays kids get a lot of opportunity because there's so many competitions for the youth. But there's one thing that people don't understand is that they just want to play competition. They yeah. don't train. They don't train as hard as how we were used to. So, it has to balance out. I, I know it's, it, it's tough for people to balance out, like, being, I want to train so hard and I want to practice, I want to train so hard and I want to play in the game. Because nowadays, playing the game is so much fun than in the back, back in the days. Yeah. But then, you know, this is the difference because we, we brought up by training so hard and we get so little opportunity because it used to have so little competition. Yeah. But then, like, we got we 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 hold on to the opportunity and we make the full use out of it, which yeah. is like you know play the best, be the try to be the best, or try to get attention from those people that's up there. Yeah, you know. So the difference is just our decision and opportunity. Okay. Like, yeah, if you train so hard and play so hard in the game, I believe and I swear that one day the opportunity will come, sir. It's just, okay. that's how I work it out, so I believe that will go the same for everyone. Okay. Um, any advice for people who are um, not as talented, like maybe like they're born shorter a bit, or like, you know, uh, not as athletic? Go to the gym. <laughs> go, go to the gym, like, go to the gym, uh, get yourself into very good shape, strong enough, and then uh, work your game, since you are, you know, shorter, maybe not as athletic, work on games that important for you. Shoot, shooting, ball handling, you know, you still got to learn how to drive, you still got to learn how to, you know, do a lot of things, like finishes, finishing, you know. So, do go work so hard for those important points fundamentally, so that you can bring your game to the whole new level. It doesn't mean you cannot drive means you're bad. Yeah. But you can make a potential out of yourself. You make a strength out of your hard work. And I think at the end of the day you see yourself having a good game. Yeah. 
can you give us like one tip like let's say for a kid trying to um, go pro next time like what's like the most important tip you have for them learn three fundamentals thing which is learn how to shoot the ball properly learn how to dribble the ball properly and learn how to pass properly instead of all the fancy full pass you haven't learned and you try to do it or you learn, learn all those Steph Curry shots <laughs> or all those like Kyrie Irving handles first before you try to think that far you get your basics fundamentals right and when you when your fundamentals fundamentals are so sound so strong and you want to advance to the advanced level you will see yourself getting there so quickly because you are so used to all this yeah how how many hours is considered enough there's no number for it <laughs> there's no number for it I think nowadays NBA players still practicing on their handling passing their shooting shoot around and everything so uh, it never stops uh. you can never stop all this you know, even though it's just a light 10 minutes handball handling 10 minutes wall passing and maybe a half an hour shooting on your own is great enough because if you are in the advanced level you know, the pro then that's all you need to just always keep your fundamentals there but if you don't if you are not to a pro you need hours and hours and hours how, how hard do you train? 365 days <laughs> I work my ass off for 363 days I guess wow okay yeah. respect um can you share share with us like the business side of things like is there any politics or is there like who helps to negotiate your pay and like what not yeah there's a manager to help me negotiate my pay but he will always they will always try to uh, get a good amount for me you know and everything so so that the, the next time or the next time there's other offers I can at least balance out my value you know in terms of in terms of it be is too high or too low yeah so politics wise I can't really say much but there's definitely politics wise you know there's a lot there's a lot that you can't even handle but I don't like politics but like I told you we are the trooper so we can't do shit about it so we just gotta we just gotta be focused on you know, you know there's politics but you have to f- be focused on what you're supposed to be focused on which is just basketball play hard and then you know make friends that's the, that's the whole whole thing about pro like why do you want to you be a YouTuber <laughs> <laughs> really you asking me oh, okay. like, just... what do you say is like the amount of power that you have like as a player versus like management and coach and like um, the boss of like the club Cause like let's say like in NBA like maybe it's like almost fifty fifty like but the owners have more so like mm, for like local scenes I will I will say it this way yeah the owner need the player yeah in NBA but we need the owner in Asia okay so this is the difference within the power so NBA player is so valued and so strong which is they are they are the most highly played NBA player in the world. So, in terms of you saying power in the management, they have the power, they want to be out, they want to be in, they have the power because they are valued. Yeah. But as us, we need them to give us the money to be in job in Asia. Yeah. So, there's no 50-50 in Asia. Yeah. It's 0-100. So, oh, serious? Zero, not that's, even like 99? Okay, to- I'll probably say like maybe there's 5% <laughs> negotiation talks. Like there's yeah. always a conversation. There's always meeting. There's always team meeting. There's always... <clears throat> you always bring up a lot of conversation between like you and the coaches and you or the... You and the boss or you and the assistant yeah. to, you know, work things out. Yeah. But at the end of the day, your negotiation will probably comes in... Not as what as what you want. Yeah. Like unless it's a very beneficial towards both ends, and then probably they will say yes lah, and then, and then or else it's a probably no in for professionals lah. But for clubs like mm, me being in the club for very long, then negotiation and stuff like that, maybe the ease and the ease lah, because you've been there with them since a long time, so. Yeah. 
you want to nego a little bit like not say don't don't say nego things that is so big yeah you know, nego things that is like oh, I, I like to take a few days off because I'm going overseas or blah 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 you know that's just a notify and stuff like that I think that's it's negoable and stuff like that but yeah. then like pro no not much no not much that you can do lah okay does like foreign imports kind of affect the market also because like you know usually as I would assume that foreign imports are better players than like local is that true? Or? Mm, yes yeah foreign imports are better but like we can't always rely on foreign imports you know what I mean so we gotta grow like every day or every every season as a local we gotta go we gotta we gotta value ourselves at the end of the day that we became the bigger picture so yeah foreign import don't spoil the market actually but it just it just need to be there for us because like we say we needed them yeah so you need foreign imports like they need yeah, like you see, like in the ABL, we need four imports. Yeah. Yes, if you can't send a team without four imports to win games, to yeah. win championship, everything yeah. four import, they try their best to get the best import, they try their best to heritage uh, a guy, an American with the countries, if you yeah. can get a dual passport, you know what I'm trying yeah. to say. But what I want to say is, like, as a local, as a real local, like, for me or for whoever's playing as a local, like we gotta step up, like. We gotta step our game up. We can't always rely on import. We can't always rely on um, players like in foreign import. We gotta step up. We gotta, you know, be stronger, be bigger, you know, be faster, be more accurate on the shooting, be more hustle in defense or whatsoever. Like you bring a bring a little inch more to a game. Yeah. So yeah, it do affect, but. I think at the same time, I think it gives a lot of motivation to a lot of people. Like, you know, actually, hey, you see, this guy is so great. Um, I can be him or close to him. So I gotta work my ass off. Uh, yeah. As a local. Nice. Like, they make you want to work harder. Uh, at the bit. same time, uh, if you have the right mindset and right motivations. Why Why are they better though? Like, is it like jeans or? Yeah, I think jeans, is, jeans play a big part. Like, they won't look as tall as like in the TV or whatsoever. But like, they are so strong. So I think that you can't reject, you know, they they are so great that their body figure is so 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 good to be an athlete that they are just naturally strong and athletic. So for us Asian you can't you don't see a guy just, just don't go to the gym but he's very strong, you know. Just. Shit, they they don't go to the gym and they're already strong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, imagine like <laughs> Those people that work really hard, they probably have their prospect in like and see the way and be. But if those don't, and those just work their ass for like something else and then just here and there, you see they playing around Asia and Europe. So so different. It's so different. You still got the hard work even though you have the potential. Yeah. If not, you'll come to Asia. <laughs> if not, yeah. If, I mean, coming to Asia is not a bad thing, but yeah. then, like. And like, uh, if they are if they are really so good, they probably have their chance in terms of being the NBL, which is in the Australia biggest league. Yeah. Or they'll be in the NBA, or maybe they can be in the NBA D League or G League for a few years to try it out for NBA. Yeah. But maybe some things that being in the NBA G League for too long, so they decided to bring their talent or value towards Asia and then they make their money out of it and I think that's great you yeah. know, everyone playing professional is not in terms to prove uh, so many things but then in terms to, you have to put food on the table for your family and to play the sports that you love you know, that's, that's the most important thing that I think we need to know yeah. as a basketball player so, so what are you gunning for like what's the end goal for you I don't know. I, I just not really thinking so much about it right now. I'm probably the guy that I'm only one of the guy that like will just go with the flow. Yeah. You know, whatever it takes or you now 
all kind of things that will come in and come off. I just leave with it, you know. Yeah. Um. Mm, can you talk a bit about injuries? Like, how is injuries a part of like basketball? Uh, injuries the most scary thing. Uh, in terms for athletes, yeah. I will just say for basketball in terms of athletes because. Uh, once you have a major injury, which is I just got a recent tear for my ankle, and then I'm just out for like a good two to three months, and the two to three months is so tough because um, it's so inconvenient for me. I'm with cars and crutches, and like at the same time you need to be you need to always be had to get everything back, and when you get everything back. You still need to work more so that you won't get injured. So, why is it important or why is it so scary? It's because when if you are playing professional at this period of time, you got injured, which is you are done, which is you are done for the good six months. Be if it's a major major injury, you are good for eight to one year. But if it's a major like those minor major injury, you probably go out for like three to six months. So I think. Time is very variable for athletes, yeah. and injury takes so much time to heal. Be it you are rushing it, not rushing it, it still it take time. So I think this is what uh, most athletes are worried about instead of other things. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Now we'll move on to like the Instagram questions. We have quite a lot of questions. Okay. Let's see. Okay, la, like this is not a question la, so I won't say it la, right. Um, who is it? Oh, oh, okay, I know who is he. Okay. okay. Um so first question. What's his favorite moment of his career? Against Ala Philippine. Yeah, with the ABL with for Kale Dragons. I was uh the go to guy because one of my apple was out for injury. And then I was a go to guy I play all the night, I make big shots, and I, yeah, that's the, I think that's the career of the night. How, how, the, how does it feel though? Like, fucking good. It, it feels so, it feels so surreal, I guess. It's like, you see, you enjoy the moment, like, on YouTube and or, or like, on live videos, but then, like, when you are in it, there's so much pressure, but when it's done, there's so much relief. You just... It's just a milestone you hit in your life again. Nice. Next question. If you could go back to sec 1, what will you do? I don't really understand this, but like, if you could go back to sec 1, what will you do? I will still do the same. Okay. Just play basketball and... And be a dickhead. Yeah, be a dickhead. <laughs> be a short ass dickhead, yeah. Okay, nice. Um, can you shave your armpit? Because <laughs> of the picture. Oh, I do shave, but just that I have like, I'm just heavy overall, so it just grows so quickly. So don't blame me. <laughs> okay. I take out a lot of shavers. <laughs> Next question. Still schooling? Nope. Uh, done school since two, two, since six years ago. S- planning on continuing or mm, like after your career? Have considered, but not so soon yet. Probably. Okay. Next question. What is the most difficult obstacle he faced after going pro? Uh, size. I think my size played a big part in professional. Uh, this is the biggest obstacle that I, I've been facing the whole time. Just I'm ble- um, I look really tall in terms like in local, but I look really small when I'm in professional. So everyone will take advantage of me as because of my size is smaller and everything, but then like I've been with it for quite a while and then I'm trying to work on it. It's just, it's just need a time. <laughs> just need a lot of time. Okay. Next question. Why he like to cry so much last time? A joke. Ha ha ha. Oh. I mean, I have a nickname when I was younger, so like they call me Crabby <laughs> When I was in secondary school, like, probably I'm just weaker and stuff like that. But then yeah, I think... He just like to bully me when I was so small. <laughs> so so now you bigger than them, what you wanna say? I mean, Fuck it all. No la, I mean I'm just cool, I'm just you know like just chilling, so 
Just don't come at me if you don't need to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next question. Um, can he spell refrigerator? No. Okay. Um, can he spell apple? <laughs> what is his favorite pastime? Okay. Hey, actually, I got a question. Like, does because English is not your first language. Like, does it affect um you in any way? Like when uh, you not really. As in, like, I can't really spell. Like, not say I can't spell. Like, I can't just. I just can't spell much. Yep. But I can spell. But I can speak English too. So it's not really affecting me in any way. It's just like. I don't really as I, I don't really need to write. As in like for negotiations like nothing lah. Like, like it doesn't it's matter. All on the phone, it's all on Skype, so it's all on calls. So I don't yeah. really need to be worried because I have a lot of language I can speak. I can speak yeah. Chinese, I can speak dialect, I can speak Cantonese and stuff. But then like yeah, I think as long as I know how to speak, I think I'm fine with everything. Okay. Uh next question. How many X's does he have? I think three. Okay. Next question. Where do you see yourself in 5 to 10 years? I don't know. Uh, that's what I'm worried about right now. Also. So, yeah. be an old athlete. Or maybe be a businessman. Or maybe, I don't know. We see how day by day goes. Okay, next question. If not for basketball, what would you be doing? Wow, that's a, that's a tough question, but... Oh, uh, MME, sign on. Yeah, probably I'll be I'll be like I'll be like in school most of the time. I'll be like really work my ass off for like school, for like ac- academy. Uh, for like to be able to go to university. Okay. Yeah, like economies and. Like, what am I saying? Uh, so uh, education, yeah. Like what? Nine to five job, ah? Uh? Yeah, probably a good nine to five job. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, next question. What do you think you did differently from your basketball peers that made you better? I'm being myself. I don't really care about the voices out there. So like, people got, so many years people do tell me like, hey, your game not right. Maybe some say your game too, you know, fancy and stuff like that. But I think this is what I want, so I don't really. I won't say care. I won't really um go and make a changes of people say unless it's something that I really need to listen. But in terms of my game, in terms of how I am, um. I do listen to advice, but like overall, I'm still being myself. I'm still trying to figure out, is this the best of myself, or am I still going to be better? You know, in a few years time. But yeah, this is one tip for everyone as an athlete: be yourself. Don't be someone else. You know, yeah. be the best of yourself. If you, the best out of yourself is. Is always limited for you then try go over the limit and that's when you get better yeah. how, how do you know when to listen and when not to listen? like I'm making impact in the game and then I'm being the best player on the floor or I'm being the best scorer on the floor and then that's when people start to tell me like hey you need to make some changes for a game you too fancy here and there etc you know but like at the end of the day, I'm making shots. I'm yeah, making impact yeah. in the game. So I not I don't have to really go and listen to you. Yeah. But like if you say like, hey, you know, you need to be more disciplined. You have some, don't you need to keep your attitude a little bit. Yeah, those those maybe are kind of advice that I need to listen. But like in terms of my game, I believe not a lot of people have much question about my game. But in terms of my character and attitude wise, okay. Yeah. Awesome shit. Next question. Did you see yourself becoming a pro basketball player? I asked earlier, yeah, but maybe you can answer again. Do you see my... Yeah, do you see yourself? Yeah, now I'm currently not in the pro now, but I'm currently in the semi-pro. But... Yeah, I would definitely see myself in the pro. Because... As in, like, since when you were young? Like, when you were young, you're like, oh yes, I'm gonna be a pro basketball oh, player. Since when I was young. No, 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 no. Because okay. I was small. I was I was just a 
little bitch like what <laughs> guy here Kiri says so. yeah I never say that oh. at least not on camera <laughs> uh, yeah I'll just tell you guys so I was so small in secondary school so I was like 148 when I was in the second one so probably I didn't have the thoughts of making the pro but after graduated I was like 182 183 and then I think have the consideration but like yeah, but then like now I'm one eighty six and then I already in the pro so I think it's just best is not planned. <laughs> you know, you never know what's coming next. So yeah. Okay, that's it for the interview. Okay. Thanks for coming man, like yeah, serious. Man. Thanks for having me here. Bro. Respect for making it so far. Yeah, it's okay. I mean I'll still make it further. Nice. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Yeah. Okay. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye.